Hey, hello there. Welcome to CS Cool channel. In this video, we are going to solve and throw a Pascal triangle problem. This problem is asked a lot of time in different coding interviews. I have added link to this problem in the description of this video. So do check it out and try to solve it on your own. If you can come back to this video. This problem is direct follow up of the n rows Pascal triangle problem, which we have previously discussed. So if you haven't checked that video, do check it out and come back to this video. I have added link to that video in the description of this video. So let me just explain the problem statement to you, which is given on the screen. Given an integer n, we need to return n through a Pascal triangle. So this problem is different from the previous Pascal triangle problem where we need to return all the n rows of Pascal triangle. Here we just need to return the nth row. Okay, so hope you got the idea. Now let's look at some of the sample inputs and outputs for this problem. So in the first example, we are given an input as 3. Okay, so we need to return the third row of Pascal triangle. Okay, so this is the zeroth row. This is the first row. This is the second row and this is the third row. So we need to return one, three, three, one in the response, which is an array. Okay. In the second example, we are given input as two. So we need to return the second row of Pascal triangle, which is this is zero. This is one. This is second. So we need to return one, two, one in an array. Okay. Similarly with this third example, where we are given an input as one. So we need to return the first row of Pascal triangle, which is this, this row of Pascal triangle. Okay. Now let's look at some of the patterns shown in this problem. Okay. I am hoping that you have already seen the N rows of Pascal triangle problem. So based on that knowledge, we already know that nth row in Pascal triangle depends on the n minus 1th row. How? Basically, we can calculate all the elements in the nth row by using the elements in the n minus 1th row, right? And we also know that space complexity required for the n row Pascal triangle is O of n square, okay? But in this problem, we just need to return the nth row. So we can reduce that space complexity from O of n square to O of n, right? After doing some of the optimizations. Now let's look at an algorithm by which we can solve this problem. So in this problem, we are going to maintain two variables, previous row and the current row. In the previous row, we will store the value of the previous row, which we have already calculated. So let's assume we want to calculate this row's value, right? So in the previous row, we will store this one and one. And based on the values of the previous row, we will calculate the values of the current row. And at the end of the iteration, what we will do? We will just swap the value of previous row with the current row. And we will continue this process until we reach to the desired row. So hope you got the idea. Now let's code the solution in C++. So here is the function get Pascal triangle row, which we need to complete. If this function takes an row index as an input. Basically, this indicates the nth row that we need to return. And it expects an vector as an output. Now what we have done in this function? So if you see, we have defined a vector as previous with the initial value of one, right? Why we have done that? Because if you remember the Pascal triangle starts with one, right? Then we have written a for loop, which will go from one to the row index because we want to calculate till row index number of rows, right? Then what we have done here, we have defined a vector called as current whose size is one greater than the current row we are calculating. So here, the size of the first row is two elements. The size of the second row is three elements, so on and so forth. Uh, here, what we have done, we have assigned the first element as one because in Pascal's triangle, the first and last elements are lower one. And we have done similarly for the last element. And at the end of the loop, we have assigned previous with the current row. Here, uh, in this for loop, we have calculated the values of jth index of the current row, which is the sum of j minus 1 and jth index from the previous row, similar to the Pascal's triangle, right? And at the end of this code, we have just written the previous row. Now, let's run this function. For that, I have written this main function where we are calling the get Pascal triangle row function. Uh, with argument as 3 and we are expecting vector with integers as a response and here I have written a for loop to print out the vector okay so let's run this code now okay so let me just run this code okay so we are getting this third row of Pascal triangle which is 1331 now let me just change the input I am changing this input from 3 to 4 to get the fourth row now let me just compile this code and run it Okay, now here we are getting the fourth row of Pascal's triangle. So what's the time and space complexity for this solution? Like Pascal's triangle, we are using here two for loop which go till n. So naturally the time complexity comes out to be O of n square. But unlike Pascal's triangle, we are only using two arrays with size n, 
right so the space complexity comes out to be 2 of n in asymptotic notation it comes out to be o of n right so we have certainly saved some space in this problem so hope you got idea about the problem and its possible solution if you like this video press the like button and follow the channel if you have any questions do let me know in the comments below and i will try to answer them as soon as possible so stay tuned for further videos in this series